How would you like to live forever? You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. That's a question that Matt and I have been asking each other increasingly as we worked on this week's series, Immortality. We covered the immortal cells of Henrietta Lacks. We covered the ways in which global organizations are planning for life in a world where people live longer or just don't die. Maybe they just keep getting older, which would be horrible if you think about it. So we wanted to pose the question to you. But before we get to that, there's something very important we need to do, and that's some listener shout outs. So earlier in the week, we went on Twitter at Conspiracy Stuff, and we said, hey, do you want a shout out on the air? Drop us a line, bonus points, if you give us a topic suggestion. Let's start with Grays of PTA, who wrote in to say, have you heard the Ong's hat story? It sounds like one weird tale. Garrett James Smith writes in to say, hi, Conspiracy Stuff, I love your show. I've been with you since the start. How about cloning as a topic? Alex Campaverde writes in to say, what about secretive satanic groups in Mexico running around torturing and killing people? And Gary Peters says, have you all heard about the wacky chronovisor story? Thanks for writing. And if you're watching this and you have some information you want to talk about with chronovisor, with Ong's hat, with secretive satanic groups in Mexico or cloning, just leave us a comment and let us know where we should start digging. All right, so with that out of the way, immortality. Here's the conversation that we've been having around the office this week with really anybody who will play this game with us. Uh, and we wanted to get you guys in on it. So there are very many long lived creatures, right? There's a bunch of stuff that lives longer than the typical human being. Trees, redwoods, Methuselahs, there's a quaking aspen that's like centuries and centuries and centuries old, uh, but there are animals as well. Uh, it's a common misconception that lobsters are immortal. They just live longer. Uh, bow whales live a long time. Sea turtles, of course, get creepy old. All of these animals live longer than a human being, but they still are subject to rule number one of nature which is that everybody dies. Life is a terminal condition. At least that's how it's supposed to be. However, there are two life forms that have found what may be a loophole in the immortality law. Uh, the first is a tiny jellyfish called Turtopsis nutricula. We're gonna make that Number one possibility for immortality. Here's how it works if you are immortal the way this jellyfish might be. So you age from your juvenile state into an adult, you grow up, go to college, fall in love, fall out of love, marry, divorce, get some tattoos, whatever. And then in a time of great environmental stress, so this could, be, um, this could be something physical, like contamination of the air, a traumatic attack. I don't know, maybe emotional? I don't know how I'd work with humans. When some stressful moment happens, uh, instead of expiring or, you know, sucking it up and dealing with it, you revert back into a juvenile stage. So you become a child. Uh, you, could, you could picture this kind of immortality as something like, okay, I get to live 50 years, but every 50 years, boom, turn into a baby. That seems like a tough drawback to me. So let's go with option two, the planarian. These are not the most attractive worms. They're not necessarily the smartest of worms, but they may just live forever. Uh, the way that they do it is immortality through mutilation. This means that scientists have found some really crazy stuff about these worms. If you cut off a piece of this worm, that piece won't just regrow. The piece you cut off could grow into a different worm, right? So if we take this to human beings, then immortality through mutilation is, is a grisly thing, right? Um, that's basically saying, well, I don't know, it's getting kinda, kinda rough for me. Um, guess I'll cut my arm off and let this other guy start over. Uh, I, think, I think it's grisly, but obviously both of these forms of biological immortality have some enormous drawbacks. And this is all, just, just to be clear, this is all just a hypothetical question uh, that we were asking each other. There, at this point, is not any scientific evidence that we could make these genes or these practices carry over to humans, yet. So nobody cut yourself, nobody planned to turn into a baby. Right now, it's probably not gonna happen. There is a third possibility for immortality within the grasp of human beings, 
And this possibility, like the first two, has some drawbacks, one of which is enormous, and that is virtual or digital immortality. We've seen a lot of you guys talking about this on the comments, and it's smart to talk about this. Uh, this may well be possible in our lifetimes. The idea is that you somehow have a scan of your brain and your brain processes, your consciousness, it captures everything about you that makes you you. And then it takes this model of you and it encodes it on a computer, on a hard drive, and so you're kind of immortal. I'm not gonna say really immortal. I know there's some ethical, philosophical quandaries there, but the idea is that you live forever, right? Your legacy lives on. I think what's really happening is that you, organic you, person A will, or consciousness A, will die, will expire, and then consciousness B, this, uh, this computer that does a great impression of you, is gonna live on um, doing its best impression of you ever. And, um, for some people, that, that is close enough. There's a verisimilitude there. But we want to know what you think. If you had to choose from one of these three options, just to recap, if you had to choose from cyclically turning into a child and then growing up again, forever, immortality through mutilation, forever, which also might produce multiple copies of yourself, or uploading yourself to a computer, to say things on the internet forever, which I guess is hell for some people and heaven for others. I, I don't know. We want to hear what you think though. So write in to us on Facebook. We'll post this question on Facebook as well. Uh, tweet us if you'd like a shout out on the air. Uh, drop a comment in our YouTube section or email us directly at conspiracy at discovery.com. All right, that's it. Stay tuned for next week when we cover pollution. Are you, uh, you still here? Video is over. I, that's all we had planned. I mean, I guess if you're, if you're still on YouTube, um, these are pretty good. I'm, I'm in some of these, so I don't know if I, if it feels ethical, you know, to plug them, but, um, Josh is in there, Jonathan, other people. Um, this one's great. I like this show. I'm not in this show, so objectively, this is a good show.